we're back. <laughs> yeah, we just got back from, you know, like last week from the Koha US conference. And uh, man, I had a great time. I don't remember half the week I was so drunk the whole time. <laughs> it's a no, uh, I, I can't recount anything right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember anything that happened at the conference yet. We say that in jest because we're recording this prior to actually yeah. being at the conference, but we're ready. And so yep. we're, we've got a, a, a new topic, but first... I'm Christopher Brandon with the Coeur d'Alene Public Library and the Cooperative Information Network. And I'm George Williams. I'm the Next Search Catalog Coordinator at Northeast Kansas Library System. George, and what do you have to share with us today? Today, I was just going to talk about the process uh, of going through and setting up item groups. And uh, by when this does air, we will not have upgraded to Koha 2405 yet. Um, most Bywater customers will still be on 20, uh, 23. 05. Um, and so this will also show up, show off how holds will look a little different uh, in 2405. So we'll talk about that today. Awesome. This video is sponsored by Koha US, your place to look for all things Koha. Whether you're just starting out with Koha, or you've been with Koha for a while, Koha US is a great place to find resources, learn new tips and techniques, or connect with other users and libraries. Koha US provides excellent information, both original and curated from around the world, including your favorite terrific every other Thursday training videos. You'll also find several special interest groups, or SIGs, to connect with, as well as our general monthly meetings where we gather to talk about the latest Koha news. You should also check out the annual Koha conference, which is held in various locations around the US. This year we'll be gathering in Round Rock, Texas. This is a great opportunity to meet with other users face-to-face, -face, and build your Koha network, as well as new friendships. And of course, don't forget about the great presentations. Koha US is also actively involved in the Koha community by contributing towards new developments. If you are interested in contributing towards Koha US funded developments, join the Koha US membership. Your annual membership builds the funds to sponsor new developments in the community. And as a member you also help shape Koha US with your membership votes, as well as receive a discount on the annual conference. You can also contribute towards developments through a direct donation or by purchasing some great Koha US merchandise through our Threadless account. Visit us at koha-us.org to find out more. Go for it. All right. And look, there's Koha US. There are all of us are in Portsmouth. That was a fun conference. Yes, it was. I had a great time in Portsmouth. And I love that picture. That's one so of my by the time, favorite group pictures. By the time you guys watch this video, there might be a new picture there from Round Rock, Texas. So I love it when we do creative group pictures. Those are those are fun. So let's see. I'm gonna this is uh the next search catalog uh, staff client, and I, I set this up on my own systems rather than the Koha US uh demo site because this gives us the opportunity to look and see this is we're still here on koha 2305 and then i'll compare that to our test server which is actually already running koha 2405 um so i've got a patron ready and i've got this um testing record so I've already got this all set up on my live system. So um, when you enable item groups, and it takes three system preferences to do this, um, you'll see a new tab on the, on the uh, bibliographic details page, and one of them will be from item groups. And so for this record, um, this is just one of my test records, but I created a, an item group for volume one, volume two, and volume three, and an omnibus edition, which uh, 
would be if you had like volumes one, two, and three all packaged in one big uh, thick volume. And so once I've got this all set up, I'll show you what it's going to look like. I can find a patron and uh, place a hold. And now I'm going to see that I can choose the next available item is the default. Um, I could, um, we have some special code on our system to prevent staff from placing item specific holds. Um, so you don't see the checkboxes there for any of those. Um, but I can also, however, say I want the first copy available for volume one. And so it's only going to place the holds on the things where the item group is volume one. So I've got volume one, 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 one. So one of those four items will fill this hold. Or I can say, you know, next available hold from item group two, which is volume two. So I've got four copies of that. Or volume three, and I've got four copies of that. Or I could say, send me the omnibus edition, which there's only one of those. Mm -hmm. The rest of the whole process is, you know, exactly the same as it is any other time. Um, but this will tell me that the next available item from group volume two is what this patron wants. Nice. Um, so it's a really, um, there's some things I like about this a lot. It means, you know, in the past we've had library, we've told libraries that if they're going to, um, we've had some libraries that want to, for example, they get like Jeeves and Worcester, the complete series on DVD, and then they want to break those up into individual. So one, let's say we have three libraries that have it. One library will want to break it up so that each disc circulates separately. One library might want to break it up so that each season, and there's about two discs per season, sec circulates separately. And one library might just want it so that the whole thing goes out at once. Right. And so this way you can put all of that on one bibliographic record. And then you can have a group that says complete season, a group that says series one, series two, series three, series four, and then a group that for disc one, disc two, disc three, disc four. And that way they can all be on the same bibliographic record, but they can all be held in different ways. Um, and and that just is it makes for a cleaner catalog it, instead of having you know one record for the complete series a separate bibliographic record for each season and then a separate bibliographic record for each of the eight discs right so this solves a lot of problems for us one of the things that's complicated about it is it means that you've got to go in there it is a little bit tedious creating the groups and moving all of the things in there. Right. So for us going back and retrospectively fixing all of those problems, that would be a ton of work. Yes. Um, but for going forward with new things, it does simplify the process. So, so let me actually, yeah, go ahead. Oh, so um, this item grouping really only benefits at this point. It only benefits holds. There's no other function for grouping other than grouping like items with within a record for the purpose of holding as far as i know um but we can always go in and look at the uh koha manual and um and you know enable item groups is one of the system preferences and it asks, you know, yes or no, enable or disable the item groups feature to allow collecting groups of items on a, on a record together. It, and the only other system preference that it has anything to do with has to do with enable group holds. So it really is, I can't see much else you being able to do with it. Um, I, you said there were three, three preferences that had to yes. be set for this? Enable item groups. Enable item group holds. You can create the groups without adding the ability to place holds on the groups. And I can't see any reason why that you would 
that you would have groups turned on and not enable the group holds. Maybe you want to be able to set everything up before you make the holds available. That that would be the only thing I could think of. Is, yeah, you know, set I mean, unless they're first. planning some other functionality with with groups down the road that we don't know about. Right. And then the third one is this one called staff detailed item selection. Um, and this is these little check boxes you see on the sample uh, image. Huh? If you don't have this one turned on, you don't see the check boxes. And if you don't see the check boxes, you can't add things to the groups. Huh. Okay. This is where I stumbled because the instructions um, that I was following didn't mention we had uh, staff detail item se selection turned off. It was disabled because we didn't want we didn't need those check boxes. We didn't want them there, and so um, we couldn't see them. And so once I enabled all the item groups features, I still couldn't figure out how to add the items to the groups because the check boxes weren't there. Interesting. Um, so those are the three system preferences. And for this one, for staff detail item selection, um, there's actually a bug that's been signed off on bug 20411 that just removes that system preference of staff detail item selection altogether. And so the checkboxes will be there permanently. You know, so that you'll no longer be able down to the disable. Road. Yeah. Interesting. Um, okay. I know that when we had it, we set it to to disable the check boxes, and I don't remember why. Um, but that's the reason we had that set up. So in the future, people just won't have the ability to disable those check boxes. Is it is it to get rid of that altogether, or are they moving that over to the hide columns um, functionality? The uh, when you look at the configure columns. Whoops. Well, remember that that's not implemented yet. So I'm wondering if in the bug they're planning to migrate that over to hiding columns rather than it being its own preference. I don't see anything in there. I don't. I didn't see anything in the bug that said that it's going to be moved into there. And actually, currently, when you look at the um, holdings table, the checkboxes are marked as cannot be toggled. Hmm. So I don't know what the plan is for that. Interesting. Okay. But I wanted to walk everybody through, you know, this is our, um, this is our test server and it's a little, little slow. So right now, without any of the item group stuff turned on, this is what our system looked like before we enabled it on our production system. No check boxes. So I don't see the check boxes. I don't see the item groups tabs. Um, and so the first thing that you want to do is enable item groups, change that to enable, in idle, enable item group holds, change that to enable. I think I have to save those separately. Yep. And then uh, the staff detail item selection enable those checkboxes. And then if I reload this page, and like I said, our test server is a little slow. So now I've got the checkboxes and I've got the items groups tabs. Um, nice. And if you start to check these checkboxes, you'll start to see the um, the options appear at the top of the page. And I think that was the issue that we had is we didn't, the reason we wanted to disable those checkboxes was to prevent people from deleting things accidentally or on purpose, deleting things that their library didn't own. Because that's always a concern when you've got 50 libraries. Um, I'm never concerned about people doing things maliciously, but it doesn't mean that things don't happen accidentally all the time. Right. So to so, create a group, so uh, there's no there's no permission wrapped around uh, this to no. enable only certain people to be able to use this. It's on for everybody. 
Uh, I believe it's on, well, let's look at the documentation. I think if you have the ability to edit items, you can add, uh, you can add them to the groups. And so to add things to the groups, what you need to do is you click on the groups tab and new item group. And I'm just going to create uh, volume one. And you have to give it a display order. So I'm just going to call that one number one. I like that. I'm glad that they give a display order. Yes. And so once it reloads, it'll it should have the uh, it should have item group number one in there. And then we do new item group volume two. And I'll put that as number two. It's probably this one. So I don't see the check boxes. I do see item groups tab, but I imagine you can't modify anything in the items group tabs. So, okay. Yeah, I think this this staff member doesn't have. So it must permission. need some sort of yeah cataloging permission in order to include that ability, which is nice. I'm yeah. glad that's locked down somewhat. So that answers that question. If you yeah. if you don't have the ability to edit the catalog, you shouldn't be able to edit any groups. One thing that stands out that you know I, I would like to see in the future, um, down the road, is you know when placing holds. If you're going to go to the trouble of you know creating these groups and you're having them all on the record, it doesn't make sense to leave the first availability. Um, option in placing holds for these types of records. It seems like if if grouping is enabled, then that option should go away because it's like you're just getting something that you may or may not want if you go for the first available. Right. It seems like it should default to uh, the groupings. Um, and then if, you know, of course, if you want to, if, if your system allows an individual hold, they can, they can go that route, but the first available option should be taken away if the grouping is is in use, because that makes absolutely no sense in that case. Right. Let me show you how to add these things to a group. So I'm going to, once you've got the, once the check, the reason the check boxes need to be enabled is because once you check things with the check boxes, it, you know, opens up this toolbar and it gives you this add slash move to item group. So we're going to call that part of group one. Unfortunately, if you have, um, like here, I've got some of these holdings are at Neckles, mm -hmm. and some of them are on the other holdings tab. You'll have so to go into each tab to, and do that. You have to go to each tab and do them separately. It doesn't remember if you check two check boxes on on the Neckles tab and then switch over to the other holdings and check two checkboxes there. It, it doesn't remember which two are checked on the different tabs. I almost wish you had the option of, you know, show our holdings and show everybody's. You know, yeah. Yeah. Show every, you know, show everything, or you could have show our holdings and then show other holdings like you have there. But it would be nice to have that option so that you could see everything together and then you don't have to flip between two tabs that would be nice yes so i've got some of these records not all of them attached to groups so let me show you now we can do this with only partial things grouped i'm going to click on holds and i'm going to place a hold and this will show you the difference between uh, what the holds page looks like in koha 2405 and koha 2305 because instead of, you know, now we've got a uh, hold next available item. And instead of, um, let me just go back here to this, to Koha 2305. So this is what it looked like in Koha 2305. You've just got the one page 
and you've got the hold next available, and then you've got this group of radio buttons, and then the whole table down here. In uh, 2405, there's a, 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 a separate box for hold next available item. They've cleaned up the interface a bit, yeah. Yeah, they've I, changed the UI on the interface. So in this one, we can together. This one we can say limit behold to a group, and we can say volume one or volume two. I didn't create, I didn't add anything to volume three, and I didn't create the omnibus group here. But this gives me the ability here to to choose a group, or I can say hold a specific item. I almost wish they had accordion those sections so that it would only open up one um specific one at a time. section because i mean you can't it's not like you know aside from the the details up at the top those three sections should have been accordion so that you're only dealing with one rather than having to scroll through everything it sounds like a good opportunity to, to submit a a bug i have a few <laughs> ideas that i'm gonna submit yeah. yes so but uh, no, these these are these are fantastic. It's a hey, change to the U of I. I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, because I know that your library is my uh, is working on this, and our libraries are working on this. Um, we're going to start incorporating Aspen Discovery in our system. Does Aspen Discovery accommodate uh, this grouping? What a great question. It's almost like we planned this because I've got. <laughs> I was trying I just to be subtle. To have, Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> I happen to have uh, a record pulled up. Um, that same record pulled up on our Aspen implementation. Um, so this is um, the same as the one in our production system uh, that we started off with. It's already set up. Um, this one has a great Gatsby cover because I was doing a training on how to up, upload a cover in, in Aspen. Um, but anyway, I'm logged in as that same test patron. And if I go to click place hold, um, it's going to say, since this patron's home library is Atchison, it's going to say, I want to pick this up at Atchison. And it'll say, please place a hold on. And from the drop down, I get the choices of Omnibus Volume One, Volume Two, Volume Three, um, because this is the first one that I tested on that's in our production system, not the one that I was just showing in our. Is there a first test available? System. I think if you. I don't see a I, first available option. I think if you don't choose anything from here and just click place place hold, uh, it says it's having a problem placing hold. Maybe it's a little again. smarter about it in knowing that if there are volumes to not do the first available. Or it might be because all of the things are part of a group. Are they? I, because you have you have the different No, groups. that was um in the um in the test record here. Let me do this. Let me go in and take some of these things and ungroup them. Uh, remove items from groups. So then I got to go back here and uh, we want to reload the page. Now place a hold. You know, I'm not sure in this case um, how long it might be before Aspen re indexes these. Yeah, I don't know if that's an indexing issue or, you know, yeah, I know the, there could be a delay with that, but yeah, that's kind of interesting that it doesn't show. If you go to a regular record in that has multiple copies in Aspen, what does that look like? You know, something that's not grouped like that. Well, let's go right here. Yeah, it's not even giving me that drop down. So how many things are on this record? One, two, three. So does it let you place a hold? Yes. Yeah. So that's interesting. So let me go back and so we want- I, I'm, I'm wondering if 
I'm wondering if the grouping is causing that error because it did say you needed to select. It was specifically saying that you needed to select something uh, a volume. So I'm wondering if it is being a little smarter. Well, let's just troubleshoot this right now. I'm going to go to a different testing record. I'm going to try to. Ah. Training and testing record. This one. Let's create a group. Give it an order. And let's just put one of these things in the group and see what that looks like in Aspen. So now if I go back here, well, again, I think we might have the same issue. Um, I think the Aspen needs to re-index in order to do a good test on this. Hmm. So we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. But uh, next is going to start using the groups feature, um, and that's why I've set it up. And I just wanted to I just thought it would be a nice walkthrough for people if you want to learn how to use it. And maybe when there's a maybe when we start doing videos about nothing but Aspen, we can. <laughs> that'll be that'll be like every other Wednesday, right? <laughs> no, no. Instead of every other Thursday, we can do every other Wednesday Aspen videos or something like that. No, no, but we certainly <laughs> could incorporate Aspen into our, our trainings here. But I would be willing to bet that the reason that we're not getting a good result there on changes that we're making right now in the catalog is because uh Aspen needs to re-index it, needs to redo those changes. Yeah. And since I'm logged in as the patron and not the system administrator i can't force a re-index without I logging am, out logging back in and all that i so. am suspecting though that because of those those groupings it is uh forcing it to not look at you know first available like i wish it would do in koha so they they yeah. may have taken it upon themselves to to anticipate that need so i don't know all right well, but that's the that's our video on grouping. So very cool, very cool, and I'm looking forward to seeing if we can incorporate that in our collections as well. It'll be nice cool. to to have that. So, all right. Well, thank you, George, for sharing that uh, wisdom on groups, and it's good to have everybody join us for another training video. We will see you again in another two weeks. Yep, maybe by then I'll be recovered from the conference. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just worn out today. All right. Bye, Take everybody. Care.